Hello. This presentation will discuss critical appraisal of the literature. I will provide an overview of the purpose and methodology for critically appraising the literature. Critical appraisal is the process of carefully and systematically examining research to judge its trustworthiness and its value and relevance in a particular context. As shown in the image below, critical appraisal is a necessary step after you have conducted your literature review and before you conduct your research or evidence-based practice project. Critical appraisal of the literature will allow you to assess the validity, which is how well a test measures what it is intended to measure, the relevance, or how important the topic is, reliability, or how trustworthy the research study is, and quality, which is the use of a systematic or structured process for answering a study question. We will talk a little bit more in detail on how to evaluate each of these points in the next few slides. To get started, you will want to use a critical appraisal tool. Critical appraisal tools help to promote evidence-based practice and inform our decision-making in healthcare by enabling users to critically evaluate and assess the quality and relevance of research evidence. There are many tools available and there is no gold standard, but they all provide structured frameworks to assess the strengths and weaknesses of a study's validity, relevance, reliability, and quality. Check out the links in our description below to view a few checklists that are relevant to nursing research and evidence-based practice. I'll discuss the steps for conducting your critical appraisal of the research evidence. As discussed previously, critical appraisal is a necessary step that comes after you have developed your PICO question and your search for the literature. Once you have your literature and have selected a critical appraisal tool, you are ready to evaluate the pieces of each article for validity, relevance, reliability, and quality. We will discuss in a bit more detail on how to evaluate the title, author, abstract, introduction, methodology, results, discussion, conclusion, and implications for each study article. So with your article that you will review, you'll first look at the title. Does it relate to your topic? How descriptive is the title? Does it mention where the study was completed? What type of study design? Does it mention the main outcomes? There will be a lot of variation in the titles, but it's a good habit to ask yourself these questions when evaluating your article. Take a look at this descriptive study title, Effect of a Nurse-Led Diabetes Self-Management Education Program on Glycosylated Hemoglobin Among Adults with Type 2 Diabetes. You can ascertain from the title that this is a quantitative study based on the word effect and examining self-management in diabetes in adults. Next, you want to look at the authors. Who are the authors and what are their affiliations? If you are familiar with the content area, maybe you'll notice a familiar author and know that he or she is an expert in the field. You can also look at the corresponding author and who and where this author is located. Next is evaluating the abstract. It's common practice to do a brief review of the abstracts to assure you have included the right articles, but in this step, you will do a more thorough review. You will notice a bit of variation here, and that is because many abstracts are written according to journal guidelines, but the main content is background, objectives, methods, results, and conclusion. And this is usually a structured format. Now we can get into the actual manuscript and first evaluate the introduction section. Here you should notice that there is a brief review of the current literature and then a statement of the purpose or objective of the study and that it is clearly stated. You may notice this in the last paragraph before the methods section. The methods or approach section is next and there are several things you will want to look for here. Is the study guided by a conceptual framework? Is the study design clearly stated? And where is it on the hierarchy of evidence? For example, are you reviewing a cross-sectional retrospective chart review? While important, this is low on the pyramid in terms of rigor. Or is it a randomized controlled trial? You will notice this is further up towards the top of this image, demonstrating that these studies' designs are quite rigorous. 
you want to look in the manuscript to see if the authors describe the setting that tells you where the study was conducted. Is it one hospital? Is it a multi-site study? Who is the sample being studied? Are they adults, children, people with high blood pressure, cancer? Even further, how do they collect this data? How well do they describe it? For example, they may state that Monday to Friday, they collected data between the hours of eight to four, and this is descriptive. What are the study measures the authors use to assess their main outcomes? Are the independent and dependent variables clearly stated? Are they using any tools to collect this information? For example, are they using a survey? Is it reliable and has it been validated? Is it widely known or used? Finally, is the data analysis section. If applicable, do the authors describe their sample size calculation? Do the authors describe how the data were analyzed? What software they used? Most importantly, does the analysis align with their main objectives of the study? Evaluation of the results is next. Usually this section is short in text and there are data in charts, tables, or figures. Take a look at the results. Are the authors describing their population characteristics? Have they provided any comparisons across groups? Have the authors completed robust analyses such as multiple regression? These are all examples of things to look for in the results section. The discussion section is next. Here, the authors should be comparing and contrasting their study findings to the current body of evidence. How are their results similar to others and how are their results different than others? And is it presented in a logical flow? You'll also want to evaluate if the authors state the strengths and limitations for their study. Depending on the journal style and requirements, however, this may be in a separate section with its own heading. Next is the conclusion. This is usually a brief, succinct paragraph that describes the main outcomes and how it aligns with the study objective. Most importantly, are the study findings relevant and important to you? Finally, are the implications to clinical practice? So what did you learn from this article and how is it relevant to your clinical practice? What, if any, could be done differently if you were to do a similar study in your own practice? Now that you've critically appraised an article in the literature, the information can be placed into a table. There are many versions for making your table and there is no gold standard. This table is presented as an example. Your table will be filled in with all of your articles that you've critically appraised that you can use for your reference as well as help guide your next step which is implementing an evidence-based practice project or designing a research study. Remember to hit like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.